Our sermon today is going to be Inherit the Kingdom. And as I was preparing for this sermon, sometimes it's, it's kind of hard because I think the Lord will place something in my heart early in the week. And then sometimes it sticks and sometimes he says, nah, that was for you. They're all for you, but you got to share this one. <laughs> because as, a, as, a, as someone that's been given the, um, the gift to teach to others as well as myself, it, um, it doesn't come easy. It doesn't come easy. And yet, because you got to get out of God's way, right? I have to get out of the Lord's way because... I'm not just, I don't want to just talk at you. That's not how we learn. And it's not, it's for all of us. And it's also for you to be able to carry something with you as you inspire and encourage others as well. We are all teachers, right? But we do it differently. As Christians, because we are the light of the world, we are the salt of the earth, we are all teachers. The biggest part of our knowledge in teaching is relationships. So as we unpack this scripture of being heirs and inheriting the kingdom, we're going to look at what Jesus says about relationships because that's really what it's all about. And as we unpack this scripture, you're going to see that, you know, so many have different opinions in some respects, but I believe everything we do will always come back to love. Love is eternal, and love heals. Love heals everything. And so, you know, even when the Pharisees were questioning Jesus, even when the disciples were saying, Lord, remember the scripture? I've been take, doing these commandments my whole life. I know them all. Right? Honor thy father and thy mother. Don't kill. Don't steal. Those are all good things, right? You can't show love if you're doing that stuff. I'm sorry. You know, you just can't. So it's all there for us. But what did Jesus say? He says that the greatest, what was the greatest commandment? That you love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. Your heart. Love starts in our heart. Heart. God changes our hearts to align with his heart. You know the song we sung, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're a Trinitarian fellowship. We believe in all three. All three. We can't know the Father except through the Son. We can't know the Son without the Holy Spirit working and revealing Jesus to us. Jesus said, I send you the Comforter. I'm going to my Father, but I'm not leaving you orphaned. We're not orphans, right? We are heirs and will inherit the kingdom. What's our motto? Advancing the kingdom one person at a time. So how do we do that? You think we do it if we're not relational, missional? We have to be all those things. We talked about a ch being a church plant. We are not an established church. We just started a year ago. This church never didn't exist before. But if we're not careful, we'll get into old established behavior. Established behaviors are we just doing church with each other. That's not what we were called to do. We were called to plant a church here to help heal this community and everyone that we come in contact with. So there's a way to do it. How are we going to do that? Well, today we are going to be in Matthew 25, verses 34 through 40. Now, we're not reading the whole chapter of Matthew 25. But just a quick look. Remember that Matthew was an apostle, right? And he was specifically in, in Matthew talking a lot to the Jewish community. He was also a tax collector. Remember? They, oh, my goodness. The tax collectors were kind of like the worst of everything, right? 
that Matthew, Jesus said, come follow me, and Matthew did. So a lot of what we see in Matthew's writings is he's coming from an eyewitness approach. He's telling you what he witnessed. Now, we're, like I said, we're going to start in verses 34, but the thing that I want to do is give you a little bit of the story before we get started there. Because what it was, was the parable, Jesus talks about the bridegroom, the bride. And he talks about the parable of the talents, right? Where you, you're given knowledge, you're given a talent. What do you do with it? Do you bury it or do you build on it? Those are parables, but they're to show us that relationship with Jesus. What is the expectation for the kingdom? Now, we all know about God's love and God's grace, right? But guess what, my brothers and sisters? We have to say, yes, Lord, right? We've talked about that before. We're given the gift of eternal life, but what do we have to do? When we know better, we have to do better. So we have something we have to do, right? Faith without works is dead. And works without faith is dead. It all comes full circle. It all comes together. Now, I was telling you the greatest commandment was love the Lord thy God with all their heart, their mind, and their soul, right? What's the second one? Love your neighbor as yourself. We can't escape it. We just can't. You know, I was looking at the news feed this morning, and it broke my heart to see that people in Texas, in some of the rural counties, didn't have water, still didn't have electricity, and their homes are still flooded. The mayor of one small town, and I think it was called Fullerton, in Texas, was sleeping on a mattress, and his house is leaking. Now, we, this is not to tell you to start blaming someone. That's not why I'm sharing this story. I'm sharing this story because these people need our prayers. There's a God in heaven that cares about their needs. And if it is within our means to do something, we need to do it. Whatever the Holy Spirit puts on our hearts to do, we need to do that thing, right? Right? And that's why I'm talking to you. That's what is kingdom stuff, right? It's missional. It's kingdom stuff, and we're going to see that. And no, we don't get to say, I'm a Christian, but I hate my brother. Remember what God said? If you hate your brother, who you can see, and you say you love me, who you can't, you're a liar, right? Right? Well, we don't want to be liars. But it's easy to pump our chest out and say, well, I'm, the Pharisees did it, right? Well, I'm better than that one. I pray. And they stand on street corners and they pray. Loud and bodacious. We don't need to do that. We just need to take care of each other. When we see what Lonnie said today about Sharon, we need to pull that thread. This is our sister who just had surgery. She's also begin to, been given a diagnosis of cancer. And I know she's faithful. But when we can walk alongside of her, it just makes her face stronger. Right? That's what we're commissioned to do. That's how we advance the kingdom of God. That's how we get to hear God say, well done, when Jesus returns to this earth. What's he going to find us doing? That's what the talents are all about. Right? What's it, are we prepared? I really, really want you. Now, I'm just starting in a small section of Matthew 25, 34 through 40. I want you to, to, I challenge you to read it the whole thing. And read it with the perspective that we're, talk, we're looking at today. Right? What is our responsibility as kingdom builders? What do we want our Father to say when Jesus returns to this earth? What is judgment? Because we're going to be in, we're going to be looking at what Jesus says, how he's going to judge the nations. 
Some of us will be in the goat category. That's the paraphrase that's used. Some of us will be in the sheep category. What it really means is some of us, our Father, our, our Lord, will find us doing kingdom work. And some of us, he won't. People don't get to hurt each other and pump their chest out that they're a Christian. I, I, I tell you, it, it, it hurts sometimes to see what people do to one another in the name of Christianity. Because I don't think Jesus would do that. Remember the woman that they brought before Jesus to stone to death because she committed adultery? Remember that lady? Jesus didn't judge her and say, you horrible, horrible person. You committed adultery. That's breaking a commandment. Jesus didn't do that, did he? Start writing in the sand. And he said, he without sin throw the first stone. He's still down. Doesn't say what Jesus wrote in the sand. But when Jesus turned around, he said, Woman, where's your accusers? Remember, they were gone. They were gone because guess what? We're all sinners. We're all sinners. Advancing the kingdom is not about judgment. It's about relationships. It's about our missional experiences with each other and with everyone we come in contact with. Everyone. It's about the young man who said, Church, do you pray? Will you pray about this? Right? And I can't tell you how many times I get that. When I'm, I'm retired now, but when I worked, it was interesting because I... What I'm trying to tell you, and this isn't to pump me up, it's because you have the same experiences. You don't know it sometimes. I didn't know it. I worked at a company for 18 years. And when I got laid, and I got laid off from that job, and when I got laid off, I was devastated. So what did I do? I packed up 18 years in about six hours. In the middle of the night, I packed up everything. And when I walked out the door, you never would have known I worked there. But what I didn't know were the pain I caused to my coworkers, because none of them knew I had been laid off. And what they said is they walked in and the building was darker. You know why? The light was gone. I didn't know I was the light. So I had to repent of that. And I went back, and we had a huge party, and we had a lot of fun. And I was able to give them and myself the opportunity to just say goodbye for 18 years of being part of this little family, because that's what we do. And I share that with you because you are your neighbor's light. You may not know it. You may be the one where your family calls and says, will you pray about this? My granddaughter says, Grandma, you got a 911 to God. I said, so do you, right? Your children, your grandchildren, they know who to call. They're calling you because you have shown them your faith in the healer and the kingdom, right? By your actions. That's what I mean by relational, missional. It's by our actions. We're not here doing church. I pray what we're here for is to learn and take that knowledge wherever we go and then invite others to come learn. Because there's some people that just don't know it. Some have never even opened a Bible. Some may not even know that there, a Bible exists, right? So how are they going to know? They're going to know through knowing us. And if all they see when they know us is someone who's angry, critical, judgmental. You think someone wants to be a part of that? And then, oh, by the way, they're Christians. No, they're going to run. They're going to run. And this isn't, I'm not sharing this for any of us to draw conclusions or even judge ourselves or anyone else. 
I'm saying this so you know what the journey looks like. So no one pulls the wool over your eyes. No one fools you on this. So now that we've kind of set the stage, let's go ahead and read verses 34. Yeah, I'm in the right place. <laughs> the king will say to those at his right hand, remember I said he separated the nations into two categories? Sheep and goat just happens to be paraphrased. But the king will say to those, and this, they're talking about Jesus returning. What's he going to find when he comes back? And Jesus told you, just like I ascended, I will come back, right? We can count on that. The king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. See what Jesus is saying? It was prepared for you all along. Let's look at verse 35. For I, looks into what Jesus is saying, listen very clearly. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Jesus is telling, remember he said, righteous, my righteous, those who are blessed. Why? Because they did all these things. And Jesus is saying, you did all these things to me. Now that's a really important point. Let's look at verse 36. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Let's look at verses 37. Now what do they say? This is the righteous. These are all of those in that category that did all those things. Then the righteous will answer him. So they answer Jesus, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food? Now they're playing it back. When was it, Lord? They don't remember. They don't remember feeding Jesus. They don't remember in giving Jesus drink. When was it you were thirsty and gave you something to drink? When was it, Lord, that we did those things? Verse 38. And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you food? Gave you clothing, I'm sorry. In verse 39. And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? So the righteous are saying, Lord, when did, I, when did we do these things? When? Do you take for granted the good that you do? Do you take what? Listen to what Jesus says to them in verse 40. Jesus answered, and the king will answer them. Jesus is going to answer them. Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are my members of my family and some translations in the Greek for family say brothers you did it to me now if you keep reading you're going to see the other side we're not we don't have time to go through it today that's why I tell you take out your Bibles let this be your maybe homework for the week read the rest the read the flip side of that read what happens to those who have that knowledge and do nothing they do nothing listen to what watch what Jesus says about that that our focus today I want you to walk out of here today and I want you to understand thank you Tim I see Tim God has kept us up I want you to understand relationships are important my brothers and sisters they just are they're important don't be afraid to reach out and build relationships. You saw in the scripture, stranger, right? When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. Do we welcome our strangers? Do we welcome people? If we see someone hungry, do we feed them? Do we open up with what we have and we share it? To the least, what we do to the least, of our brothers and sisters. We've done it to Jesus. 
Don't we want Jesus to come back to this earth and say, well done, my good and faithful servant? Do we want to be the one who's deliberately not feeding those that are hungry? Do we want to be the ones that aren't praying for our brothers and sisters? Maybe they are 3,000 miles away, but do we know who answers prayers? Our Father does. Our Father does. Puerto Rico, still no lights. Now remember, these hurricanes were two months ago. Can you imagine living like that? We are so blessed. What do we do with our blessings? Are we missional with them? Do we care? Do we care about others? What do we do with that? So I have some things I want you to take away today. Some points that I want you to just kind of reflect on. Remember when we started the story? Jesus was judging the nations. All nations will come before Jesus. But you know, they're not going to be judged on what people think they may be judged on. Jesus is going to say, what did you do for each other? Did you love me first? And second, did you love each other? That's what we're going to be judged on, my brothers and sisters. That's what we're going to be judged on. And don't think we have to do it perfectly. Let's just do it. If we hurt someone, let's assume, I would hope we didn't intentionally do it. But if we do, let's have enough to say, I'm sorry if I hurt you. I'm sorry for that. And really mean it. Jesus is going to judge the nations. And I promise you, what we will be judged on is this, our relationships with each other. That's what we're going to be judged on. The righteous are blessed by the Father, by taking care of each other, by loving one another. That God blesses that. Jesus gave us a new commandment that we love one another. And what did we see in Matthew? Are we kind to a stranger? You know? Do we take care of those we don't know? Do we show love to our enemy? Right? Work in progress. Right? I'm still working on that one. But I'm not going to ever give up because I know I'm commanded to love. Jesus gave me a new commandment. I don't get a pass on that. And neither do you. That's, what was the next point? We are going to inherit the kingdom of God. We are heirs to the kingdom. We are adopted children of God. Let's act like it. Let's not let anybody steal our crown. Let's not let anyone breathe hate into our heart. And most of all, we learned last week, God is love, right? God doesn't dwell in fear. It's just not there. Remember what? Remember what Paul said to Timothy? God did not give you a spirit of fear, but one of courage, love, and a sound mind. A sound mind. See how it all comes back together? We can't get away from it. And most important, what we did to our brothers, we did to Jesus. Remember? Jesus said, what you've done to the least of my family, you've done unto me. Right? So let's go ahead and end with prayer. Our Father, our God, we thank you for offering us a kingdom to inherit. And thank you for these words we've uh, heard today, Father. We just ask for growth in your nature, that we will learn to love others like you, the king of the kingdom, does. Just ask to the insight to see opportunities as they arise and in that vein make this coming week a good week. Thank you, Father, in Christ's name.